College is expensive, like really expensive. Especially here, in the United States of guns, fast food, and student debt. It wasn't always this way. In 1980, the average cost of tuition for one year at a four-year private college was $3,500. Adjusted for inflation, that's $10,226. Today, that same year of college goes for $32,000, three times as much as only 36 years ago. So what's behind this? Well, that's both a complicated and controversial question. To understand why college has risen in cost, we first have to understand why college has always been expensive. The biggest fraction of your tuition goes to salaries. The national average student to faculty ratio is 18 to 1, meaning that for every 18 students, there's one faculty member. The average professor at a private college makes $126,981 per year. Divided by 18, that comes out to only $7,054, which doesn't seem that bad. But you have to consider that there's more than just faculty. There's also coaches and gardeners and kitchen staff and dorm staff and maintenance people and admission staff and marketers and IT staff and security guards and college presidents. Altogether, the salaries and benefits of all these individuals add up to a whopping $24,000 of our $32,000 tuition. Salaries tend to be high because college functions similarly to many other industries, following the rules of supply and demand. The most popular college majors vary over time because interests change to reflect changes in culture. The problem is, you can't just magically create new professors. By the time new professors go through their 20 years of education and specialize in a field, the major will no longer be the popular one. So when a major is popular, colleges have to compete to get professors, and the only thing that really matters is money. Money brings more professors, more professors bring more students, and more students bring more money. At the same time, professors in historically popular majors receive tenure. Tenure is the idea that in order to promote academic freedom, long-time professors should have their job guaranteed until retirement. With professors that legally cannot be let go, there can often be an abundance of professors in less popular study areas. So we still have $8,000 of tuition unaccounted for. Colleges need places to teach and their infrastructure is rather unnaturally expensive. Classes only run for 8 or 10 hours a day, 5 days a week, for 40 or so weeks a year. That means that classrooms are only in use 23% of the time. The college still has to pay for the space the other 77% of the time, which of course adds up. Additionally, colleges really like to build nice buildings because these attract students. The average cost to build a building varies by location, but it averages between $115 and $215 per square foot. By contrast, UMass Amherst Commonwealth Honors College costs $354 per square foot, UMass Boston's General Academic Building No. 1 costs $594 per square foot, and Berkeley's Lower Sproul Building costs $654 per square foot. Of course there are other factors contributing to the high price of college, but staffing and buildings are the big two. Now for the reason college has tripled in price. It's always been expensive to pay highly educated people to teach in inefficiently used buildings, so what has changed in the last 30 years? Well, college is more popular than ever. In the last 20 years, college enrollment has increased by 50%. Federal and state funding for colleges has actually increased to an all-time high since 1980, but with the simultaneous increase in students, per-student funding has hit an all-time low. In 1990, Ohio's flagship public university, Ohio State University, paid for 25% of their budget with government money, while in 2012, only 7% of their budget was paid for by the state. With less federal and state money, students have to pay more out of pocket to make up the difference. Additionally, colleges have changed to appeal to the millennial generation. According to William Strauss and Neil Howe, the millennial generation, born between 1982 and 2004, are characterized by seven core traits. They are sheltered, confident, team-oriented, conventional, pressured, achieving, and they feel special. Sometimes called trophy kids, millennials tend to be more ambitious and more unique than the preceding generation, which means that they tend to believe more in the right fit idea for college. Colleges responded to this attitude by adding more and more amenities to help them stand out to the growing number of students. All these new amenities required more and more management, which contributed to the boom in administration at universities. According to the U.S. Department of Education, the number of administrator positions increased 60% between 1993 and 2009, which is 10 times faster than the number of tenured professor positions. So just as I finish my why flying is so expensive video by telling you that flying is not that expensive, I'll finish this video by telling you that college is not that expensive. 85% of full-time degree-seeking students at four-year universities receive some sort of financial aid, with the average grant hovering at around $15,500. 
That's a significant amount, but I'll admit that there's still a significant amount left over. Until you consider that going to college is the single greatest investment you can make in your life, especially today. People who go to college earn on average 98% more than those who only have a high school diploma, and that number is up from only 40% 35 years ago. So, given that, what's the true cost of college? When you look at it holistically, over your whole life, the cost of going to college is not $32,000 a year or $128,000 over four years, but rather negative $500,000. By skipping the opportunity to go to college, you will forfeit on average half a million dollars in potential earnings. Go to college, kids. Thank you for watching. I'm very excited to say, for the first time ever, this video is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible is a company that I admire a lot and have used for years before this sponsorship. As I imagine any subscriber of Wendover Productions does too, I love learning, and a great way to learn is through reading books. The problem is, I live a busy life and rarely have time to sit down and read a book. Instead, I fit reading into my schedule by listening to books when driving, doing dishes, running, whenever. Audible has an amazing selection of 250,000 titles, including one of the best nonfiction books of all time and a personal favorite of mine, Freakonomics, which can be yours for free forever by signing up for a 30-day free trial using the link www.audible.com Wendover. Alternatively, you can download any other book for free with that free trial. Using that link to sign up for a free trial is the single biggest way you can help support Wendover Productions, so I do hope you consider it. Aside from that, you can subscribe to this channel if you haven't already by clicking the button here, or follow me on Twitter, at Wendover Pro. You can also check out last week's video on Dagon H, the day Sweden switched driving directions, here. Thank you again, and I'll see you soon for another Wendover Productions video.